Hey up folks, welcome back. Listen, have you ever seen that film named uh, Memento? With that bloke with tattoos all over his body. It's, uh, it's crackers mad and it's super confusing. Well, that's where I'm at now, because I've done that many videos recorded in front of where I'm actually at in reality. I've lost track of where I'm at. So, <laughs> things might not always make sense and might not flow properly now, because, uh, I don't know, I've confused myself. That's because I went on holiday and I thought I'd get some videos in. Anyway, these coppers here, look, I'm absolutely sick of them snooping around looking for the tanks or something they keep going on about. So what I've done is I've rung uh, anonymous tip off that there's a load of bush at the side of the uh, steam train sign at Liberty Junction. So as you can see, they've found bush, but it's not bush they're looking for. They think it's some kind of other bush, but it's just a bush. I, I weren't lying, I just said there was some bush stashed in corner and there is some bush. But they've been here for four days now, so it's quite decent. They've stopped uh, Aslan owner anyway. So I built this little loco shed out of some boxes, uh, as you'll have seen on a video that I've already put out. It's not quite finished yet. I'm going to get a couple of bill bits and bobs, and I might put a bit more weathering on it. But uh, I'm quite happy with it for what it is. Just a bit of a cheap building to shove some locos in. Owner's here. Look, he's just uh, having a chat with Ladderman and Mechanic. Uh, he's wondering how long it's going to take before uh, I get around to painting all these wooden push bikes that are all around layout that I haven't got any paint on them yet. They're on my to-do list and I just keep forgetting about them and then uh, every time I see them I remember that I need to paint them. There you go, look. But yeah, I never get around to it. So yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. He might be asking Ladderman about his trip down to Devon that we went on. Oh, my original train spot, a cameraman, look, he's back on the wrong side of the fencing again, causing his son of mischief. I think there's police, uh, I've just let police car pull up, yeah, there it is, look, she's out already telling him to get off. Don't know if he'll listen. So anyway, what we're going to do is, I've just brought HST down, and I'm going to take Grot with that big length of train. He's going to see if he can make the loop, uh, and if the couplings will do it, and I'm not convinced it will, but let's have a look. This rake of wagons that Grot's pulling, it's the right weight because them 90 ton backmans, are, they're like cast metal, so they're, uh, they're decent, they're a decent weight. I've, I've weighed them in past, I can't remember what I said they were, but they were something about 300 grams or 350 grams each from what I remember. I might be talking absolute nonsense though because I fully can't remember, but there it is. So yeah, and look, look at him now, it even says keep out and danger look, he's right on cliff face. So uh, let's hope he don't fall. And apparently, he's been uh, encouraging extreme extreme train spotters, which I'm not overly happy about either, because uh, they're getting into all sorts of trouble. Anyway, just on a little bit of a sign though, I went to uh, Devon, as you know, because I told you last week, uh, and we went to that South Devon model shop, that model railway place, uh, next to, to Heritage Line even, and. Uh, my missus come in with me and uh, <laughs> it was quite a good shop. And uh, she looked at these post boxes and she said, oh, they're good luck. Why don't you get a couple of them for your layout? And then she says, oh, my God, the 7 99 And anyway, they were about, I don't know, I want to say about as big as a thimble, but they're probably about a quarter the size of a thimble for eight quid. Anyway, I just basically, I stopped looking at that point. Anyway, look, it failed. It stopped with a load of wheel spin, so basically I think what I needed to do in reality is get a little bit more momentum, and I'll try it again. But don't forget I run Inox on my lines so that I don't have to clean them anymore. So it's a little bit less traction than normal, but that train's going up a, up a uh, gradient, and it's got two curves, and one of them's almost a 180 degree curve. So it's a great mission to get up that with that length of train. So I thought it had done really well. Uh, it literally only just didn't make it. Uh, but like I say, if I tried it again and, and did it, I had it about, I think I've run it at 40 mile an hour scale speed. And I reckon if I have pushed it a bit faster, it it got up there. I'm confident it would. Anyway, who gives a monkeys? It's up now because I pushed it in my hand. That was a bit arty, wasn't it? I started off with that uh, ID vaccine farm image. I quite like that. It looks superb, doesn't it, with camera on it. Then I panned down here, but there were no coming, even though I'm running two trains at the minute, but timing were all to pot, so what can I do? This is what I've done, look. I've put some uh, bits and bobs of grass on. I've put some little piles of sleepers with a little bit of overgrown nonsense on them. 
Uh, I've just at minute got a container in there because he's just uh, dropping some goods off and I've put a little bit, bit more fencing around it. Painted them plastic sleepers up, painted up a little bit of scrap line and I think it looks half decent that now. I think I was overthinking it before. I think uh, how it is now, it's just a little bit of an area where I can keep doing uh, bits and bobs in. Always up to no good stuff I reckon because I don't know what's in that container but it was mooing. So it's definitely not radiation, is it? I think it might actually be stock for Annie's cafe, but uh, it's still alive at the minute, so it's not going to be in there anytime soon. So I've got Extreme Train Spotters DVD to put on the end of this. Some of you might not like it, so I've shoved it on the end because it's got a little bit of a music track. They're playing all this kind of crackers, uh, graffiti style music because I think they've interrupt graffiti these Extreme Train Spotters, so it's all a bit like hip hop and street. So. If you're going to watch it, if you haven't got a baseball cap, I suggest you get your send down to JD Sports or Sports Direct and buy one. Wear it backwards if you can. Uh, and maybe have a glass of Monster Energy or something like that. Anyway, back on subject from about four minutes ago. My missus don't miss a trick. She heard me mention her, so she's sniffing around trying to listen to my commentary. I had to talk quiet because I were on about that model shop. So yeah, basically she saw these things at 8 quid and then she started seeing things that were 30 quid, 40 quid, 50 quid, 200 quid, 300 quid. So I basically just bought a little pin vice and almost ran out at shop because I thought you don't need to be seen anymore in here, love. So uh, I didn't get to have a decent look round, unfortunately. I was a little bit devastated and I was going to make an excuse that we needed some milk or something and drive back next day, but I never got round to it. So yeah, a bit of an experience. I'll stick to mail order and then they don't get to see stuff. Hey, just on a bit of a side note as well, you know that uh, video I did the other week where I said it was the best shot I've done so far and I filmed it through railings. I've had loads of positive feedback about that shot, people really liking it. Uh, and what I've come up with is uh, it's quite interesting. It, it's cheap as well, it's only like about 10 pence. Basically, if you buy some of that scale railing, you know, you can basically sellotape it to your upper eyelid and uh, then when you're looking, it dangles in front of your eyes and that's how you see things for, forever and it's it's quite good. I've been doing it for about eight days and I've been having that view that you saw on that shot. I've been having that. That is my normal day-to-day -day vision and I'm loving it. I heard a few compliments about it down in Devon because I, pe I think people thought it was like some designer eyelashes that I had. I basically salt pair I wear into a woman named Gloria for 25 quid, so I made an absolute killing on that. Anyway, stripes just going to connect up to these, but as you're about to see, uh, wheels on these Acura scale wagons are that juicy good. It doesn't even, uh, doesn't even resist a little uh, KD. So I just push it out of shot, and get a little cheeky touch of my finger on, and you wouldn't even know if I had told you, but I like being honest. And then he's going away, look, we're on, all connected. Should have kept my mouth shut, shouldn't I? Hey, I'll tell you what I saw the other day, and don't uh, don't laugh at me if it already exists and I don't know, and I just don't know. Basically, I know Backman sell body shells, don't they? So you can buy, like, loads of Class 37s for about 50 quid for a shell. Why don't they sell, like, a dummy bogey? So you can have it as a dummy train, so you can double, double, double header them. Do you know what I mean? Or does that exist? And I, I don't want to like, I don't want to like bastardize the train. That's no wrong with it. And I don't really want to run two locos. I just want to have some cheapish dummy loco behind this one or another one. Uh, yeah, it's just an idea. Why don't they do it? Or why don't they just make dummy locos for like a little bit more than a coach? And that cameraman there, look, he's only gone there since I did that amazing shot of the week, and now he's trying to replicate it for magazines. I'm gonna to have to get some. Uh, I'm gonna to have to ruin his photos again, like I did on about episode three. Because going back to what I was saying, they'd sell, wouldn't they? People would buy them if they were like, I don't know, for example, let's call it, I don't know, seventy quid for a decent, realistic-looking dummy loco. I'd pay it anyway. Anyway, I don't suppose that's really important. What is really important is you're about to see five trains running in the same shot. Get ready. Here it comes. Boom. Five trains running. Said I'd do that, didn't I? Did I say five or six? I can't remember. Someone called me out on it. Anyway, it were hard enough to do five. 
I actually, I would have had six there, but I sent uh, Shunt at wrong way. Look, he's just coming out now. He was just wheel spinning against the buffer at wrong direction. Anyway, I'm having that as a full five trains running. I don't care that one of them were only, one or two were only single locos on their own. Anyway, I was so determined to get six, I, uh, I retook this one. And if you just wait till HST is just about off shot at back of that building, that's six trains running. Cavalex, HST, Stripey 37, 08 Shunter and two wagons on top, six lanes running. Boom. And then I thought, well, it were only just in shot that one, so it wouldn't really count. So I thought I'll wait a bit more. Send it round here. Now I've got 37, and so I've got three running on bottom. That's four with HST, five on top. And when other train comes in on top, that's six, and that's a definite. But as you've seen, look, I've had a coupling failure. Oh, well, not name and shame it, but it rhymes with James Blunt, that coupling, the one that failed. So anyway, I had to press emergency stop because it was trying to smash its centre pieces, and uh, we left it at that. Here we go, folks, extreme train spotters. Hope you like it. What you need to remember, these guys use parachutes. They use them crazy uh, squirrel suits. You know, it wings under arms. Uh, and they do all sorts of stuff. Looks like this guy's about to jump off cliff with his parachute. Yeah, he has, look. He's going all the way down to get his shots. Look, nice shot at 37, I think he's going to get. Oh, yeah, decent. Look at that. And uh, I see all about this music. It's scratch music, isn't it? I haven't heard this since uh, 80s. And then he's just landed, look. And, uh, oh, cop woman's after him. Oh, yes. He's going to have to do one. Oh, he is. He's doing one, look. So, yeah, what we've got next, we've got Guy Rao. He's right on bridge, look. Oh, right, I'm just... I'll tell you what, the, the crackers, these lads. I reckon this guy's on one at the top of them really tall pylons, look. And he's just... Uh, He's just jumped off that now. It's going to be another parachute job in it. How he's floating, got a bit of a thermal there, look, and lifted a little bit. Spins it round for a nice triple shot at uh, trains. And uh, yeah, decent. Bit of a floater. Four trainer. Four train shot, decent. I'll tell you what, though, that's an efficient parachute as well, isn't it? How it's. Uh... Oh, there it is. Boy, he just fell at end. Oh, he's doing one, look. See, once they land, they've got to get out of here. He's right on Gerda Bridge, look where there's nowhere to go. He's getting shouted at already. And they film it, they're quite brave, aren't they? They're not, they're not taking any, uh, they're not messing about, even though there's security and police and all sorts on them, and he's just done a backflip, look. He's got, oh, yeah, yeah, he's about to, though, I think. There we go, look, he's just chucked his son off, double bridge, yeah, and he's out of there. Gonna land in water. Oh no, just on grass. Oh, he's doing one, look. It's like a compendium of craziness, isn't it? Not really sure what this one is. He's, uh, he's having a good look round. To be fair, it looks like original cameraman's footage, this. Yeah, I reckon it is. I reckon it's original cameraman from the other side of the bridge. Just filming a train. Gotta say though, it's not a bad little shot he's got. It's a little bit close, isn't it? But uh, it don't look too bad. Uh, something going on in the background. I'm not quite sure what it is, but uh, he's obviously got his eye on it. Oh, look at that! It's uh, it's an extreme train spot riding a cow for some close-up cow footage. But is it me? Are these lizard things getting any bigger? They look that's looking like it's getting massive now. That. Australian Andy, can you just confirm? They're not giant lizards, these other that you sent me, because uh, God, big giant lizards taking over. And this lad stood on uh, lines so he can get a photo of these, uh, a video of these uh, radiation wagons coming round, because he knows inside them, he knows I've got last at Caramax, because they've just uh, stopped making Caramax, haven't they? And uh, I've bought a load of them, because uh, I quite like them, and there's not going to be any left soon. Look at him on house roof near the chimney. What's that all about? I tell you what, folks, I thought this was going to be a bit chaotic, but this is on another level. I've never seen it like this. He's jumping down on top lines and all sorts look right near it. Oh, he must have on the top wall there, look. Oh, no, he's not. He's still going down. He's, uh, he's going to get one of if he's not. Has he just been hit by H? Oh, I think he got hit by HST. Decent. 
That's going to be one less problem. What's this guy doing looking over the edge of the wall here? Oh, he's got police after him. They've got him. Oh, wow, has he just jumped onto the roof of a moving train? Like something out of a 1950s Hollywood movie. Look at that. Yeah. Cops aren't going to be doing that kind of stuff. Not Liberty Junction cops. Look at that. That's mint, that. He's escaped. Another one on the roof, look. Don't know where this is. It's, uh, it looks quite high, though, this one. He's eyeballing some up. Done it, he's jumped. Oh, he's jumped onto the back at 37 train. Like some kind of train robber. Look at that. Oh, he looks like he hurt his son as well. I'll tell you what, I can kind of see now why original cameraman's there getting these videos at Extreme Train Spotters getting the sensor because he's going to basically get viral videos out of it, isn't he? And he's not even doing any at risking, really. He's only stood on edge. And that, uh, that policeman was shouting at this lad. Apparently he's got one of them winged suits on like a flying squirrel. But look at him encouraging him. He's jumped. Oh, look, look at that. Floating right across. Decent. Decent little suits. Them, aren't they? Might have to get one. Apparently I didn't realise that this uh, TSX Volume 1 DVD has been banned in three countries because uh, it's so dangerous and extreme. Two countries were because it's uh, so dodgy and extreme, and one country because the president didn't like uh, scratch music. What are you supposed to do when uh, there's all this copyright music? You've got to kind of do your own, aren't you? Get your your wheels, get your sense some vinyl spinning, and get your sense some scratching done. Anyway, folks, that's the end. Hope you liked it. See you later.